I think this week is the, the unfortunate realisation that Dylan isn't going to stay at a mainstream school or probably it isn't the best place for him. Man, I'm going to struggle to get through this. <laughs> So we've had to make some really big decisions lately. Dylan was in a specialist nursery setting from the time he was two to when he was four and a half. After he finished nursery, he went to an autism base unit school, which was attached to a mainstream school. And he was there for about a year and a half. The mainstream school the unit was attached to was too big. And he found that too sensory overloading. And that's why we moved down to Brighton to come to a smaller village school and this has worked out amazingly well for him. You know, we, he came in year two, he's had one-to-one -one support, but there's only about 200 students in the whole school. So it's really nurturing, it's really loving, and this has been great for him up until recently. You're gonna have a scar all down your eyes. <laughs> it's just hard because the only reason I wanted him to go to mainstream school is to make friendships. And he's made some amazing friends. You know, like when I was going to school the other day. Yeah. I bumped into Oliver and Oliver was like, how's Dylan, we really miss him. And I was like, I know, he misses you. It's and it's- tissue. Hold on, keep going, I'm listening. <laughs> I haven't gone to watch the rugby, I promise. <laughs> the past four weeks have just been so hard. Look, the past four weeks has been- Thanks. A car crash, so well, something just, has to change. It's just the fact that his anxieties have gotten so bad. And I know his anxieties are bad because of the need to control, and I know it's because he's changing. And I think because people are talking about secondary schools and he had a friend that moved recently, I think all this has kind of unsettled him. And the fact the headmaster changed as well, I thought about that the other day. Any little change in routine, just he finds really hard. Yes. And the first day back at school, he told me that the headmaster doesn't like him and gave him detention. I mean, the headmaster just said hello to him. To him, it's like everything's suddenly amplified, you know, 50 times. You know, Luca brushes off him, oh, Luca hit me. Because everyone's school has been, you know, this whole coronavirus, the headmaster has been talking about it. And so in assembly the other day, he was saying everyone needs to wash their hands so they don't spread the coronavirus. And of course, Dylan's now going, everyone's got coronavirus. No, that's it, I'm not going to school. It literally took me an hour and a half to get him to school the other day. And then they phoned me after 45 minutes and said, he's not left the foyer, so please come and get him. It's always like he constantly goes from one thing well, look, yeah. he, he has obsessions, to, you know. To another. I don't he know, has like obsessions almost, with things he always has. Remember that reality. one time he had that one-to-one, -one, he hated her, and then he refused to go to school that, but he got over it. You know, he had a bad phase, he got over it. Secondary school's coming up now. It's not like he, we can keep him in this safe little environment, in this safe little school. I mean, his poor head, if he's that anxious about everything, if he genuinely thinks that, you know, as much as we tell him that, you know, he can't turn into something else, who, who knows what it would be. The validating his fears, all of that's helped. So the nighttime has got a lot better. The school thing, they don't think they can meet his needs anymore. But his birthday's coming up soon and he's like, oh, I want all my friends to come, I'm so excited to see them. He wants his friendships. I would love for Dylan to stay in a mainstream school. And it would feel like regression if he comes out of that environment and has to go to a specialist school. I just think he probably needs a bit more support. I mean, he's getting speech therapy, he's getting play therapy. But he's got a one-to-one. -one. How, how much more support can you get than a one-to-one? -one? Yeah, in a specialist setting though, they, they offer more support. There's been a lot of change. The headmaster changed, he had a friend that left the school. All these changes that he can't control are happening. And, and I think we need to make a decision now on schooling for secondary school. If we take him out of mainstream school, I need to change his EHCP plan, the plan that kind of states everything he needs, so it's a government-based yeah, yeah. thing. So we'll have to challenge that, and the school will then say that we feel he belongs in a specialist setting for secondary school. My fear is that once you take him, once we take him out of a mainstream school, like he's out of that system. In a, a mainstream setting, he's with neurotypical children, neurotypical children well, the other thing would is, hopefully bring him forward. I think that what Dylan finds hard, do you remember we tried him at that Northeast Manor for a few days? 
What he found hard is the fact that these children also find it hard to socially integrate and his neurotypical friends, they understand Dylan, they understand his autism. They've been with him for so long, which makes me upset because they do know him so well. They make allowances for him, you know? They're like, oh, don't worry, Dylan, it's okay. Whereas other children on the spectrum, they're also struggling and I just, what is the right thing for Dylan? How, how are we gonna help him? The school expressed their concerns to us because year six is when they do exams. It's a lot more less structured. And this is why they suggested to us that we move him after the end of year five. This is where all this came from, which is why we looked at Northeast Manor. But when you look at other secondary schools, I just don't think he's gonna be able to cope in such a But at the moment setting. he's not even in school. He's in school maybe three hours a week. He's coming home at 11 o'clock. He's running around the school screaming, obviously highly stressed himself in that environment. The reality is Dylan is autistic, he's not stupid, he's a very intelligent kid. I know. Probably too, too intelligent, you know? <laughs> and then that begs the question, how much of his behavior of, at the moment is because he doesn't want to be in school? Most kids, a lot of the time, if you gave him the option, do you want to go to school? Uh, no thanks, I'd rather stay at home and Okay, play yeah, games. I do get that, I do get that, and I can be oversensitive to the fact that you know, I do protect Dylan a lot and, you know, I know we do need to push him. As Roz said in our event, keep pushing, keep having the highest expectations and we do have the highest expectations for him. But right now... Right now is a struggle. Well, everything's a struggle. Going to school is a struggle, going for a walk is a struggle, going to bed is a struggle. Well, Never... the, the bed's getting better. <laughs> bed's getting better. Getting in the car is a struggle. Oh, it must be so hard for him. Right, so we have to find a school somewhere in this world that's good for Dylan. Hey, Luca. Hi, Dylan. You okay? Would you like if Mummy and Daddy set up a school? Mm. Daddy can teach sailing. Mm. I'll teach how to cook. Or maths. I'll teach maths and sailing. I like maths. How do you have cookie in your hair? <laughs> Dylan's finding school hard at the moment with his autism. Do you see him around school? Not much. No. What does he do when you see him? Like plays with his friends. You see, he does play with his friends. Once I, um, when I was playing with the ball at school, mm -hmm. Dylan came over to me and he said, let's defeat the wall of fish. Oh, he loves you, doesn't he? You're his best friend. Can I get some water? Sure. Sure, go ahead. So yeah, so I think we're gonna have to try and find an autism base unit attached to a mainstream school or we're gonna have to go to a specialist setting for him. Somewhere in this country, if we have to move, move country, we will find him a school. We've got to change. We've got to change something. We need massive action, for sure. We always go through bad no, no, stages, we do, we don't do. we? It, uh, yeah, but and it, then we get back I mean, up this again. really does feel like, normally it's two steps forwards, one step back, two steps forwards, one step back with this. It just feels like about 15 steps back right now. <laughs> I think it's an age thing as well, like everyone I've spoken to have all said that you know their kids are figuring out stuff and figuring out emotions. I spoke to my colleague at work, she's got a, a son who's um, latter teens. Oh yeah, what did he, she and say? she said, yeah, from 10 to 14 was <laughs> car, car crash. Oh yes! Absolute car crash. You don't know how to, to articulate your uh, feelings and emotions and understand them till you're sort of latter teens anyway. So once you get to 15, Have you figured 16, out your emotions yet? You could start, well, yeah, you know, it's taken me about four, four, 40 years. <laughs> sorry. I'm still working on that. Um, <laughs> you have to laugh. If you don't laugh, you cry. No, you do. It's some, some days it's so unfunny, it's funny again. You know, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> As with everything, we'll get through this. I just say, sell everything, buy a boat. Sailing around the world. Uh, Bring our house with us. I'm not sailing around the world. Where's your sense of adventure? I don't have any right now. I'm trying to get my kids to school is enough of adventure as it is. That's true. <laughs> it's, like climbing, it's like climbing Everest. Might be easier. Let's explore the world. Yeah. Let's all run Let's away. Let's do it, Luca. Simple us together against the world. Yeah! yeah! We got this. Yay. You're, the, you're the best brother in the world. <laughs> Yay! Woo! Yeah. Leniston Fowlers forever. Woo, woo. You guys, honestly, you are amazing. You are the best brother and sister to Dylan in the whole wide world, aren't you? You going to sleep? She could do with a sleep. For now, you know, we're going to find the answer and I'm going to find the best place for Dylan. 
and you know Dylan has expressed a want and a need to maybe be with people who think a little bit more like him and maybe he might get a bit more support in a specialist settings. So yeah, I'll keep you guys posted and we'll see you next week. On a peanut butter jelly town. There's a song. Is this real? Yeah. <laughs> Pickle back. Peanut butter jelly.